Welcome back to Physical Science 20. This is the second part of light rays, reflection of light. Properties of plane mirror images. So looking at yourself in the mirror, you can see that your image appears to be the same distance behind the mirror as you are in front of the mirror. How could you test this? You could do it experimentally. And in fact, in the labs that you would have done, you in fact did that. Um, so here we could simply measure uh, use, a, use a pen, make a dot where the image appears to be and do all the measurements and work it out that way. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all that because there's a second handout here that we're going to look at and have some practice with that. Plane mirror image position. With a plane mirror, the image position is equal to the negative of the object position. The negative sign indicates that the image is behind the mirror and therefore virtual. So, in other words, if I was to draw a perpendicular line from, an ob from a point on the object, extend that behind the mirror, it would be an equal distance, but negative since it's behind. You can draw more light rays from the object to the mirror to determine the size of the image. If the sight lines of the two rays originate from the bottom of the candle, uh, and it will converge at the bottom of the image. From the law of reflection and congruent triangle geometry, we can find the following is true, that if I had a object of a particular height, the object height is also equal to the image height. Uh, image orientation, uh, it has the same orientation as the object, so if, if the object is right side up, the image is right side up. If the object is upside down, the image is upside down, etc. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this and show you what I'd like you to do for questions for this part. We could call this plane mirror images. Question 7, 8, 9, 10 should be fairly straightforward and uh, not involve any more instruction. So you can do that on a piece of loose leaf or the same loose leaf that you did the other ones. Lastly, you have this extra handout. Uh, locating images from a plane mirror using ray diagrams. So getting into step-by-step -step procedure as to how I did that. A ray of light travels in a straight line. This term is referred to as rectilinear propagation. From the moment we are born, when we reach out to touch things, our brain develops and understands that light travels in straight lines. To complete the process is as follows. It's from light from a luminous object spreads out and fills the room. Light hits an object and the light interacts with the object. Some of the frequencies are absorbed, others are reflected. The rays of reflected light travel off in all directions, some with which reach our eyes. Our brain interprets this information by assuming that light travels in straight lines, tracing the different rays back from the eyes to the place that these rays met. Our brain determines the distance that an object is away by the angle differences of the rays which reach our eye. This is called stereoscopic vision. And there's a little interesting thing here. Try this. Cover one eye with your hand. Turn to your neighbor and ask them to hold up their pen in a vertical plane. Try and touch the tip of the pen by bringing your finger down from above. With one eye, you'll have virtually no depth perception, perception and it'll be, perception, it'll be really difficult. So you could try that. So having two eyes, this triangulation helps us determine depth, how far the object is away. When light hits a mirror, our brain still assumes that light travels in straight lines, and so we kind of think of the object as being over here, when in reality it's the image of the object. The image is really not behind the mirror, no light travels behind the mirror. Instead, the mirror fools our mind due to our understanding that light travels in straight lines. Our brain traces the rays back, straight back to the place where they would meet because no light really originated from that point it's said to be a virtual image as we talked about so the steps in which we can draw a diagram like this here they are right here you may want to highlight this call it steps to success so find the image location by drawing a perpendicular line from the object to the mirror so if i'm using this part of the football draw a vertical or a perpendicular line to the mirror make sure the image is located an equal distance behind the mirror so boom and boom as you can see here are congruent same distance so first distance second distance points one point two if the object is complex you could do this with at a variety of spots so at the tip this tip of the football boom and then extend it backwards boom etc uh, draw a line from the image to the eyeball such that the dotted line is behind the mirror and the solid is in front so dotted line because this line doesn't actually exist but it exists here as a solid line and of course an arrow here pointing to my eyeball draw a solid ray from the point of incidence to the original object so this tip of the football came out like this from the point of incidence here the point of contact extend that backwards and that demonstrates how our eye actually sees that football 
Add arrows to the real race to show its true path. Arrow, arrow, and then repeat this for several other points if you need to. All right, that's really how you do it. So on this sheet, I have some practice questions. Uh, for number one, just simply draw the virtual image that you would see here. How does the image appear behind the mirror when these shapes are in front of it? So all of these are in front of their respective mirrors. You draw the, uh, the image on the opposite side. So for example, an object like this, you may choose to do three points. One, two, three, extended, extended, and extended backwards, and you won't get confused by the shapes. Number two, find the image and trace two rays from the object to one eye at two different points on the object. Draw any ray behind the mirror at the dotted line to show that they are virtual, add arrows. So the steps to success there that we looked at back here, I'd like you to apply these steps to success to this part here. So maybe make two, one on each side of the object, one on each side of the arrow, at least maybe two on this one, maybe even three would be better. Draw the image like we did in question number one here, but then draw how the rays, in fact, see the object. All right, that is it. Here's a little joke to end things off with. So uh, there are three uh, light assignments there. Uh, please uh, complete those and then hand them in. We'll see you again.